How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. I think if you're subscribed to this channel, a lot of you are looking to retire early. And since I sort of did it, you know, semi-retire or whatnot, um, you might want to get a glimpse on what to expect when you do retire so that when it does happen, you're not completely shocked, you can get a taste of it. Today I am on my car seat thing. This is salvaged from my MR2 back in the day and it does still work. I have this, you know, I can, it's like a car seat thing. And I like to put it next to this uh, fireplace thing so that you can sit lower to the ground because, you know, you, you either just sit on the cushion and you don't have anywhere to lean back against. So this thing serves a very good purpose. I like it myself. So anyway, I'm going to go through the 10 things, 10 different things on what I noticed when I retired early. So the third, the first thing is you might think that I'm doing these daily videos uh, because maybe I need the money. The, the truth is I don't need the money. I do need a little bit of it, but I estimate that I might be able to get away with making only maybe one video uh, a month, maybe once every two weeks. And I can probably still make enough money to sustain my burn rate because my burn rate is roughly $1,350 right now. Um, if I don't go travel, if I don't go buy expensive electronics, which I have plenty of already, I have this camera, I have TV and everything. I have basically most of the things I actually need. Um, so therefore I don't really need to buy more electronics unless I'm trying to upgrade forever more, which you guys know that I don't really do. So that's one thing to say about these daily videos. Another one is, uh, the second thing is I work, um, many people would say that I should have worked another year or two in engineering. Wow. You know, you make six figures and you could have made a lot more money and maybe retire comfortably. The way I look at it is this, I have 30 some years before I actually retire. These are what I think might be capable working years. I might not, I might, you know, get disabled or something next year. But to me, you know, reasonable thinking, I should be able to do 30 more years. So instead of working another one year, which is at the time when I quit, it was grueling. It was really long. I hated the commute and stuff. So to me, why not spread these 30 years uh, why not spread this one extra year of working over, let's say, two or three years of kind of coasting along and doing whatever the heck I want, such as making these YouTube videos, which is a lot more fun for me. I'd rather do this for two years than work one year. Something I want to say is that out of this, it's been, uh, it's April right now. I think it's been one, uh, a year and a half or so of me not working at a real job. I feel like I've lived my life like at a rate of about five times as much. I feel like I've completed that much um, over someone or over myself that at a time when I used to work. Let me explain this a little bit further. During the time when I was working, you know, this five year span, it just passed by so quickly and I would have things on my to-do list and I would never get those done. It was, it would usually be like my personal passion projects. But now whenever I have some random idea, I just get those done. And I feel like really it's, it's about five times, a little bit more than that, maybe, uh, depending on how, how hard I push myself and, and I'm not even pushing myself that much. Um, so that's why I say when you're living your life on your own terms, you know, after, during this early retirement thing, you're really like kind of living it in, in, in high speed. You, your time kind of fe it either feels like it's slowed down by five X compared to someone who is, uh, you know, doing their full time job, you know, doing the grind, which I feel like time passes by super duper quickly. Another thing about early retirement is that I feel like once you're doing this, you dictate what you do yourself every single day you are then really, really a free person. Um, to me, working, you are 
you know, you're not a slave really, but then it's kind of halfway in between. There's a huge gradient over here. And I mean, it's kind of costly to try to retire early. It costs a lot of money. So although when you have a job, you might like it, but there are always certain things you need to do. Um, even right now, you know, in this, whatever I'm doing, making YouTube videos, there are certain things I still have to do. Sometimes they're self-imposed. For example, I'm making uh, daily videos these days. I just kind of feel like it. Um, it's, is it slavery? Is it, is it like not being as free when you choose to do it? Am I absolutely free? Because if you're a YouTuber, um, you might not be absolutely free. Um, you are essentially required to keep on uploading, I don't know, consistently every single week. So th there's a broad range of freedom. And even in this state, I'm not completely free, but certainly it's a lot free than daily requirements of commuting to work. I wake up whenever I want. Uh, for example, sometimes I would like to wake up at 6 a.m. sometimes. Um, I did that for a while for one reason or another. And then today I woke up at about 10 a.m. Sometimes I would wake up even at 2 p.m. So there is no requirement. And sometimes I would forget uh, when, what day of the week it is. Sometimes I'm like, hey, how come uh, people will, are willing to buy stuff off of me more so on Amazon, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Facebook Marketplace on Sunday? And then I had to really think about it. Say, like, oh yeah, I, I, I don't remember. People are more free on Sunday because they're not actually working. So, you know, you, you get into this super kind of not realizing it kind of mode, you know, after a year and a half of this stuff. You're not in the mindset that you're so busy every single day, Monday through Friday anymore. Uh, if you are ever sleepy sometimes i get sleepy because sometimes maybe i not, might not have very good sleep for whatever reason sometimes i don't know s random event happen and i wake up in the middle of the night then you can actually take naps in the middle of the day um anytime that you want whereas if you're at a job of course there's unless you're at one of those you know those big companies that have nap pods or something i kind of suspect on those if you can really go and take a nap for like two hours or something. But anyway, for me, uh, every single day, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, if I ever really need a nap, I can go take one. So this is uh, what comes with early retirement. I'm never trying to push myself because I remember so, uh, while I was working, uh, usually uh, maybe on Sunday, if I party too hard or something, or maybe on Thursday, if I go out with friends, party too hard. The next day, um, I would just be slogging it through and I would be pushing myself. Sometimes I would just be at my computer and I'm like kind of dozing off and stuff. So I try not to do that, but you know, it happens to some of us sometime un unless you're really good about it. But, um, you know, the, it's, it's a kind of pain to me because if you're pushing yourself to do something while you're um, deprived of sleep, it's, you're not really good at doing it. So it's better that you get rested first and then, you know, wake back up and then you do your thing, which is exactly what I do at any time that I want. Same thing with being sick. When you are sick at work, uh, a lot of times people rather push themselves to go to work so that they can save up that PTO time. Sometimes it's combined, you have to take days off and it counts against you. Other times you can only use uh, sick days for sick times. Um, but most of the time you, I, I feel like you're pushing yourself a little bit because if you are ever a little bit sick, um, I got sick very rarely over the past year actually because I have less contact with coworkers. Usually when I'm at work, uh, someone, you can hear uh, someone coughing, maybe like kind of further down, you know, across um, within the same building, but kind of across the way. And then you're like, oh, shoot, is that coming for me next? And, you know, most of the time, you know, after, you know, in the afternoon, even, you know, just within a few hours, you start feeling your throat kind of feeling congested and then you get sick yourself. What? being early retired allows you to do is if you ever feel sick, you can immediately just rest. And then you tend to, I feel like, 
your sickness period is a lot shorter because you can go, okay, I'm just going to take whatever time needed for my body to heal and you need it right away. Versus if you're at a job, it'll, it, you know, you might try to push it all the way through to the weekend, maybe three, four days before Friday comes and then you can go, oh, okay, finally, I'm a little bit sick. So I'm going to take it easy this weekend. So this kind of postpones your, your time to get well earlier. I no longer have to fight traffic anymore if you guys are interested. Um, I tend to not go out during traffic hours. Sometimes I still need to do that for one reason or another, but I try to schedule things so that um, I kind of leave during uh, right after traffic hours over here in the Bay Area. It's between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. There's lots of traffic then, and also between uh, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. So those times, if you're ever on, you know, a main artery freeway, there's going to be lots of traffic. So I try to like not go out during those times unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, another thing that I was uh, talking about at the very beginning is my to-do list. Um, I always have these ambitions to do during uh, when I was working. I always have these ideas, oh, got to do this or do that. Sometimes they're, I guess, my own interests, you know, and I realized that when you have time to actually do it, it could either be actual time or mental ability time. When you're exhausted from work, when you look at that to-do list, you might just be mentally exhausted. You're not ready to tackle it um, versus er in early retirement, then you have more mental ability. And I realized that most of the time, things on my to-do list actually does not take me all that much time to complete. So these days I have the mental ability to, and then I look at my to-do list and go, oh, okay, that item, okay, let me just go do it. And then lo and behold, you, I didn't even realize it. I can actually get it completed in 15 minutes. Um, Mental requirements is high, however, the actual time is low, if that makes sense. So these days, my to-do list is, is zero. I don't even have a to-do list. Whereas before, when I was working, I remember having like pages and pages of it, maybe at least 15, 20 items, and it would just kind of go on for months. I would have like five, 10 items that are, you know, I think is important and I want to do. But then it would just keep on getting delayed. I come home, I'm tired, I'm like, forget it. Um, weekend comes, I have something to do, forget it. This goes on and on. And I'm sure you, you, you know, have the same things, you know, even before you actually have to try out early retirement. So this is just something I want to bring up to, to let you realize that, um, wow, that's why I can speed up my life at five times uh, this rate of someone that is still working. Some of you might be concerned if you retire early, you're not going to have a job anymore. Uh, you're not going to have that camaraderie with coworkers. Um, yes, that's true. You don't have something where you go in every day and then you see the same people where you see more often than you actually see your own family. Eight hours a day, you see your family, what, two hours a day. Um, but I had to say, um, there are other substitutes, okay? You can go to meetups with other people. Uh, as a YouTuber, I can meet other YouTubers. I go to uh, conventions. Um, there are financial conventions I'm thinking about going to. Um, in those things, you can kind of supplement um, kind of this social interaction with other people. Um, certainly, it's, you know, you can see right now, I am at home, there's nobody around. Um, if I can go outside and, and just yell and there's nobody out in the street right now. So um, it, it's a lot different. Uh, certainly suits people that are more solitary and kind of uh, introverted uh, like myself. So I am perfectly comfortable in this position. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when, you, when I go to work before, I'm like, oh, I don't want to see those people certain people, right? There's always people that you don't really want to see. I remember, <laughs> now, now I have to bring this up because I suddenly remember uh, there's this guy, uh, this is more like politics back at um, one of my previous jobs. And I, I tend to try to shy away from any of this politics stuff, but I totally think it was this guy that keeps on complaining about me. Um, you know, I tend to be very blunt at work and um, maybe it might not be the best way to get along with people. But this guy, he 
I feel like he got offended, and you know, he's he just tried to work the system to to um, make things goes goes against me. Anyway, uh, something else about vacation time. Vacation time, it's almost like it's not yours. Um, for right now, early retirement, obviously, you know, I have that t-shirt that says infinite vacation. You basically go on vacation anywhere you want, but I found out that there's something more important for me than vacation right now. I already did 10 weeks of it the past 12 months. Um, got plenty of it, you know, went to New York, went to uh, Hong Kong, went to uh, Barcelona, went to uh, Japan, uh, just a whole bunch of places. Went to Disney World, um, just within the past year. And this is something I could not do while getting, you know, while at a job. They give me two weeks vacation, three weeks, maybe four weeks if you're really good about it. Maybe you have one of those jobs with infinite vacation. Uh, but 10 weeks, I don't know if I can do that at, at many different jobs and they'll still be okay with it. So um, this time... Uh, this time allowed me to go on all these vacations and just get my, you know, get my f share, fair share worth. No, get my feelings worth, you know, so that I feel like I am, you know, I'm full from having vacation. Having said that, I start to think about, okay, sometimes when I go to certain places, I feel like, oh my gosh, this is just kind of all the same thing, especially the tourist stuff. Um, I'm sure there are places that would be interesting and stuff, but also, you know, when I'm vacationing, I'm, I get a little bit tired uh, from walking everywhere. You kind of feel like, oh, I'm here. I'm spending $50 a day, $100 a day to be here. I better make the most of it. So you're just kind of compelled to go out, walk around some more, uh, just kind of wear yourself out. It kind of sucks to uh, go on vacation for two weeks and then you, you kind of force yourself, which you need to, to kind of have a rest day of not walking anywhere at all. Actually, I feel like after I vacation for a week or two, um, I feel like I need to come back and I actually need to rest for a whole week um, from those two weeks of vacation. These days, what's more important to me is kind of more of what's internal. Um, I have a lot of stuff. That's my justification. I'm trying to minimize those things. And um, through this effort, I feel like I can do something more with myself. Maybe I can be more mobile. Uh, maybe I can more easily rent this place out. Whatever reason it is, I feel like it's, I feel like that that's the direction I need to go. Um, versus, you know, if I go on vacation, it's just kind of putting all this on pause. Uh, if that make any sense, that's kind of more important to me uh, to, to reduce the stuff I have. Um, you know, even if I'm not getting that much money, I could, you know, spend my effort doing other things. I just, you know, there's something good about selling something and getting some money from it and also uh, getting some use out of it. You know, when someone else is going to take that item, they're going to use it some more. Uh, something about the efficiency aspect of it just really appeals to me. So those are all the things. I think I covered at least 10 items that, uh, is apparent to early retirement. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was not too long. Let me check how long it is. Oh, 20 minutes. I'm probably gonna cut out. There's only gonna be like two or three cuts in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.